you see water by something. How did we get here? A CDMP TV and film presentation from Crazy D. The mind who brings you the Black Ice Chronicles, the Females DVD, and Situations DVD brings you the Shifter. It's Halloween night at Crazy D's. And a pesky vamp is out for blood. Beware of the Shifter. That's it. You gotta go beat it damn scram, man. Damn. Why don't you be a doll and find me a place to change? I need a place to change my clothes before I go. What? Don't try to hold me on the phone. Damn. You been holding out on me? I was just about to stop and help. You know I helped the crackheads, D. Some people just don't have originality with their outfits. It's like I hear voices in my head talking to me and shit. I saw that punk ass Charles Pippen and his cousin leaving here. I learned the grace pose. Get your camera ready. We're here, like we said, for trick or treat. <laughs> Crazy, what did you see? <laughs> this is bottom by something. Beware of the shifter. Be at the premiere if you dare. <laughs> Brother Muhammad, if you can, I see you got the sax. If you can hit it, we, we gonna, we just gonna move the mic out of the way and just let you go ahead and hit it. This one over here in the West Coast Vegas a Library Theater is part of the summer program for our youth. Brother Muhammad participated. Let's see what he got.
I'm going to tell you, this brother meant something to me, he still does, because the images that he created put my, my life in front of me on TV and on film. I'm not going to tell you how many films he's been in and how many things he's done. I'm just going to tell you, he already has a day here in Las Vegas. That's right. We have an Antonio Fargas Day. They may not have other things, but we got Antonio Fargas Day historically bound in history forever as part of our Timid in the Desert series. I know the man's work. Thank you so much for making time to, to vote with our youth in the Summer Arts Program. Mr. Antonio Fargas, thank you so much. How are you doing, Icon? And we are back. It's your man, the Turntable Assassin, and I promised you I was going to have, and I said it, that's right, I'm country. We're going to have I have the beautiful The talented The gifted I grew up with this lady I love her Can I keep it on Listen 100 My first crush I'm so serious My first crush Before Janet I couldn't have a crush on Janet She was a little penny I couldn't crush on Penny But I crushed on Thelma but Ladies and gentlemen The beautiful Miss Bernadette Stannis Hey oh, Thank you How you doing? I'm good I'm good How are you? I'm doing great You know what I, I told you we, we don't do interviews Right We just gonna have a conversation yes. What is going on With Bernadette Stannis Right now? The Black Ice Chronicles Females DVD ah. I don't think you realize who the f you talking to. Written, filmed, and directed by Crazy D. Look, Crazy D, I want to work with you. So how long before we start shooting? I don't have all day, but... You don't have all day. Selling now. I see you still got the lips. This is a reality that's going on right now in the streets. People are being targeted. People are being... Um, you know, just just the whole nine yards in many ways snatched up, railroaded into a prison industrial complex system. And there you go, becoming the new modern day slave. OK, uh, the reason why I ask that question is more as far as the person protecting themselves, not outward appearance, because I realize that as human beings, we should be able to dress like we like to dress. Right. Because even in the 20s and 30s, 40s and 50s, when the zoot suits were out and the men were dressed in three piece suits, the police would run up, uh, drive up to the corners and it would be a scatter mode. Still the same, even though they were dressed to the nine, so yes. to speak. Yeah. So it doesn't matter how we're dressed. What I'm saying is, how do how do we get our youth and our young men to be aware that they're hunted and thus be aware of surroundings and you know that that's what i'm talking about i'm talking about more for us not for our outward appearance to someone else yeah i got you on that because as, as you as you begin to talk about that in terms of being not having to be regulated into wearing whatever it is that the society wants us to wear we should be able to define for us ourselves what we want for ourselves you know um i remember that campaign that was out not too long ago where uh the rizza had said something kind of similar where you know, hey, man, people should be dressing differently in order to do this and that. You know, and all of a sudden there was this huge tell RZA this person was wearing a suit campaign that was going on. Of course, you had the Sanctuary, um, uh, Without Sanctuary, the book that showed clearly countless number of black people in this country, Africans in this country, in this country, America, being lynched, being strung up on trees and having their lives taken away from them. And they were dressed in suits. You know, or in army or military uniform. Yes. Bars and bars and bars and bars. I said, uh, I said, every verse is dedicated to my day ones Ooh. who always kept it G and never changed up. The big homies who's the reason why we came up and they taught us game and they let this town change us. I can't forget my Brody Keys, homie caged up. 
We make you move so that when you home, you A1. Really, though, if you with a person that don't want, that's hating on your dream, you gotta leave that motherfucker. Cause they ain't cool for you, they hate you. They, they're, not, they're not right for you, though. You got you some dreams, man, you better chase them dreams. If you ain't got, nothing, if you ain't got no dreams, all you got is nightmares. Okay. Just keep it real. Just, 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 some, just, a little bit, just a little bit from me to, you know, from me to you. Now, with that being said, some dreams got expiration dates. <laughs> like if you were born before 1970 and you ain't never been in no rap video, you might want to stop rapping, nigga. That's for real. Quit playing though. Quit playing though. Go full time at the job, right? As you playing. Here's the thing about Germany, why I made the curator's pick of the Hollywood French Festival. Unity, 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 Hi, this is Marvin King, and I am here with the film review. That part, baby. It's your boy B Tim's Power 88. You know how it is. We're going down the world famous bomb squad. Right now, you're chilling with my man Crazy D and you're checking out the film review. We got movies, music, culture, politics, and all types of society events going on right here on the film review. What up? You know who it is. It's the infamous one, the infamous DJ Remix. And uh, it's a big ass shirt, but I'm going to represent for Lord Land Films. That's how we do it. Lord Land Films, I'm just saying. You have been warned. What's up? This your man, DJ Movie and Party Rock. I'm representing Power 88 FM. And you are watching the film. Man. Hey, what's up? This is Tori Russell, the founder and director of Broadway in the Hood. We love you all. Reach Broadway at the Hood at broadwayinthehood.org or 702-482-8777. You are watching and looking at the film review. Crazy D, y'all. The legendary Crazy D. Crazy D is before his time. The musical digital man. And I want to say right now, what's up to Crazy D? Crazy D always one of my number one supporters, man. A good man, good family man, Crazy D. Tell everybody where to follow you at right now. I want everybody to go follow Crazy D. What up, Crazy huh? Crazy D, the legendary Crazy D. What up, dog? Yo, Nipsey got some joints, man. All right, people. This is Crazy D, and I'm standing here with Porch Chairman from uh, TC's Barbecue Crib. Go over here so you can see the sign real quick. You know, we need a black television station because nobody is going to be there for us like we are. So come out and support. It's a free event from 6.30 to 9.30. It'll be live entertainment. You'll be uh, able to receive information on the channel, how to get the channel, if you want to have content on the channel. That's right. And remember, the event is free, but the food is. So come early and get a meal. See you tomorrow. Hi, this is Bernadette Stannis, Thelma from Good Times, and you're watching the film review. Yeah, so she just left film review. It's a film review. <laughs> Thought you knew. Hello, everyone. I'm Rodney Smith with the film review. This is another great episode of the film review. We are the husband and wife team. We are the husband and wife team. We are the husband and wife team. Stay tuned. We're the husband and wife team. I'm Crazy D. And this is the film review. Stay tuned. We got a lot to talk about. We are the husband and wife team. We review movies, music, culture, politics, and society. This is the film review. Movies, music, culture, politics, and society. We're the husband and wife team. I'm Crazy D. Tracy. And we review. Movies, music, culture, politics, and society. Sunday at 5.30 on Crazon Dion page on Facebook. Live stream. The film review. Movies, music, culture, politics, and society. This is the film review. Before we start, Before we, we are sending um, prayers to our friend, Franklin. That's right, Franklin G. Yes. He was in a car accident a few days, a couple of days ago, and uh, was sending prayers up. We've been sending prayers up since uh, Savoy let me know. 
that it was happening. We are and praying so for a speedy recovery. recovery the Franklin G. So again, yes. for all of our um, listeners on Blog Talk, we are now on telephone number 213-943-3358. This is the Film Review, yep. Movies, Music, Culture, Politics, and Society. We are your hosts. I'm Crazy D. Tracy. And we review movies, music, culture, politics, and society. Do we have a great show for you today? And like we said... Uh, just a few seconds ago, yeah. prayers go up yes. and out for Franklin yes. G, yes. host of Like It Is Radio. Yes. Uh, he was in a yeah. car accident uh, yeah. a couple of days ago, yeah. and prayers up to him because yeah. you know that is just um, unbelievable that that would happen, especially on such a big weekend for him being uh, inducted into the into the Nevada yes. Broadcasters Hall of Fame. Yes. And so um, Savoy has informed me that the surgery went well. Yeah. And so the surgery went well and yeah. so uh, fast recovery, yes. Franklin. Definitely, definitely praying for a speedy recovery. That's right. Back in the saddle. Yes. We had just come off of as we gone on ahead and uh, cleared the table and sweep the floor. We had just come off of a great episode of Like It Is Radio where we were talking about where Franklin was talking about various different topics including the <clears throat> chicken wars that are going on with the chicken oh, sandwich and yeah. we cut up a nice four minute piece yeah. that talked about um, the chicken wars that are going on as far as uh those two places which we're not going to name because they've already made 23 point something million dollars worth of free advertisement from all, for all the different challenges people have done. They've got us fighting over chicken. Can you believe that? So anyway, we have a jam-packed show. We have, uh, we have Donald Randell calling up from Dolomite Records. You know that movie uh, Dolomite uh, is my name. Yes, it's coming out. Eddie Murphy. That's right. He's it's going to yeah. be coming out shortly, and we have his former manager, who was his manager from 1976 all the way up through to his passing, mm -hmm. and he runs Dolomite Records, making sure that uh, Rudy Ray Moore's yeah. image, likeness, yeah. and uh talent as far as stand-up yeah. and movies is protected and remains in hands uh, that are like Rudy Ray Moore's own and we're going to get into that. The topic for the night, okay. the top 10 reasons black women are afraid of nudity. The top 10 reasons black women are afraid of nudity. We're going to be talking about that. We also are talking about Q Money, a Cleveland MC who was caught up in something in Atlanta back in April, but everything that he's coming out with is just banging. For people who think that hip hop is dead, his lyrical flows was there, and we're gonna be talking about him, right? And then, of course, we just came back from seeing Dion Cole. Yes. And Jimmy J.J. Walker yeah. at the Orleans. And do we have a review for you on that, right? We actually got a chance to uh, do a quick impromptu with J.J. Walker. Yeah. And so that is up on the Crazon Dion page right yeah. now. And so uh, you can enjoy that because yeah. we sure did enjoy it, yeah. right? So listen, the topic, the top 10 reasons why black women are afraid of nudity. You know, we watch a lot of programs and we notice that the glorification is always on the European female and not so necessarily on the black female. If you see the black female, usually it's, which there's nothing wrong with this, but usually you'll see booty whopping or booty bumping or something like that, but you won't see things, uh, uh, displays of beauty like what was happening in the 70s when black was 
and it still is beautiful. So the question is for tonight is why? What are the top 10 reasons why black women are afraid of nudity? And we're gonna go through that as I continue to populate. So what I've seen over the time, because you know, I've been a photographer, I've been a uh, film guy, and you know, I write scripts and then I produce them and show them to uh, different people and they, they seem standoffish about doing the scenes. And I'm like, why are you standoffish about doing the scenes? I think that it's a lack of education on many people's parts as far as uh, what the past was, right? And we got a phone call. We got a phone call from California. Oh, okay. Uh, let, let, let's bring it up and see who's on the line. Okay. Hey, what's going on? Welcome to the film review. Who are we speaking with? Okay. Okay. Okay, you have to take us off. We had to, you had to take us off this. Hello? Yeah. Hey, how you doing? Who are we speaking with? Hey, how you doing, Donald? Is this Donald Randell? Okay, can you turn your radio down because we want to have a clear signal and then on the playback you'll be able to get it. But we got to have a clear background now. Okay, I, I had you live on screen on my uh, laptop here. Um, I, I just needed it. How is it now? Okay, that's that's real good. That's real good. So, people, the, okay, per, cool. the person who is called in right now is the label owner of Dolomite Records. His name is Donald Randell, and he is the man who is keeping... Dolomite's image alive. Give him a hand. That's right. So how are you doing this evening? And man, I am blessed, man. I am extremely blessed. A lot, as you know, what's going on with the really, really more movement, movement because of the movie. Like you just mentioned, Dolomite is my name. So there's a lot of fanfare, you know, reaching out and, and um, can't wait to see the movie. And, um, the only thing that's missing, of course, is the late, great Rudy Ray Moore, man. That's the only thing that's missing, unfortunately, for him not to be able to see this because we were in talks on this uh, way before of his passing. And um, so now it has, it has happened and, and he's not here or there. So that's just the only thing that's kind of a, a bummer for me, you know, because I, you know, obviously because I'm close to everything that's going on. So it just, because uh, we talked about this, it was an attempt to do this movie back, um, uh, I think it was probably the mid nineties actually with the same writers and Andy Murphy, but it was gonna be over at DreamWorks, but it didn't happen for some reasons. So unfortunately, Rudy passes away and it happens with Netflix, but, um, it's just one of those things that, you know, these type of things happen all the time as you, you know, can say, but it's just something that's once again close to me because we had, Rudy and I talked about this and he had a lot of different uh, opinions about it and, he, you know, he's been disappointed because he's been promised so many things, you know, for his career and, and his life that it never did, never did happen. Mm -hmm. And this probably would have made up for a lot of the things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I understand. This discussion, let me take a quick uh, second to give a, a, a plug here. This discussion is brought to you by TC's Bobby Q Crib, located at 3655 South Durango Drive in Las Vegas, Nevada. It is a tourist attraction and it is the place where you walk in strangers but you walk out friends the food is incredible as you see we have our bands on you know so make sure that you uh get your bands when you go there get your t-shirts and take in the food we want to say what's up to sharon and the whole staff yeah. over there yeah and uh you know it's just incredible over there yes. and they hold events for people to um 
different events for the community as well as food. So it's not just walk in, order your food and leave. They are actually there for the community. Yeah, they are. Yes, they are. And now we also want to say real quick before we continue this the discussion is that we have a new we have a new show sponsor yes. that's right there's a difference between advertisement partners yes. and show sponsors so this is our first show sponsor yes. and they are the beautiful 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 bracelets that you yes. see on right now right you see this you know what I mean Beautiful, made from nature. That's right. It is the Naturally Fly Boutique. Yes. That's right. So you see these bracelets right here, uh, right there on the screen. You can also see this ad Beautiful. on my Crazy on Dion page. Yes. Also on my Instagram up. page. You can get there and you can order it right there on their yes. site. So we want to welcome them Beautiful. to the film review. Take they place. are our show sponsor for tonight. And TC's Barbecue Crib is our ongoing yes. uh, advertisement partner. Yes. All right. Yeah. So we got that out the way. Now, since you were in the 70s, right? We can be correct about that, right, Donald? You grew, you came up in the 70s, right? You, 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 we, we, we can say that, right? So you will be able to have a, you will be able to have like a real educated answer to the topic tonight right being that rudy did okay. deal in what would be called back then in that time streaking and some of his album covers were you know uh utilized and had beautiful black women on the cover right so why do yeah. you why do you think today in 2019 compared to in the 70s in the late 60s early 70s why? What are the top reasons why you believe black women are afraid of nudity? Wow. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, as you know, <laughs> as you know, you know, times change. Okay. And we are living in, you know, obviously in some different times. On top of that, in my opinion, man, this is like a whole new world. It's like a whole new world we live in right now, and. And to try to answer your question to the best of my knowledge is because people are trying to be this so-called polit politically correct okay. and people don't want to be free to do whatever they want. But if you know it's bothering, they take it on the screen all day long and get naked and generate sex and everything else. But when it comes to the black women, you know, black women or whatever, if they choose to do that, you know, in their career, that, that you know, that's their business, you know, it's, it's a business. So, but other than that, I mean, think about the scene that, you know, Pam Greer did and the you know, other great talented actress that shows, you know, topless and nude here and there. I mean, it was a beautiful thing then because that's just part of the culture of, 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 of filmmaking. And, 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 it, and it, now it's just, it's all about people want to be what you want them to be. Straight up, what going with the flow of what society wants you to be, and they put it on our minds, and it could be a trap, black is beautiful, but not on the screen. Not on the screen. Be looking all sexy and all that. You know what I'm saying? It could be a trap like everything else. Yeah, see, that, that's what I'm saying. On the screen mm -hmm. is very important because film more than literature today mm -hmm. pushes you know what people see in their eye gate pushes how they feel about themselves would you agree with that I, I, absolutely absolutely you know it, go, it goes to that, that thing man when something happens in the hood when the reporters come who do who they go to who they put the cameras to and when they interview they want to you know, interview. You know what I'm saying? Um, when something happens in the hood, they want to find the most unarticulate person to put over the airwaves that are usually stereotypes that have been perpetual stereotypes that people like Rudy Ray Moore were breaking during the uh, what I call Soul 70 Cinema, but they called it black exploitation. 
the NAACP president according to black exploitation. <laughs> And, and so, and so you know, Rudy hated that term. So you know that yeah, he did yeah. not like that term, black exploitation. And he broke it down in many interviews, and and, and many times we'll be in this personal conversation as we travel. He will bring that up. But I don't, I don't want to get too far from something else I was about to say. Go ahead. Uh, I'll open it up, and you hit the nail on the head on why they interview those type of, of people in the hood because. But when America sees that, they think we're all like that. So that's why they do that. So think about it, if you see a beautiful black woman on the screen, movie, TV, film, whatever, that they nude or partially nude, showing off their body or whatever it, it is, how far they want to go, you're showing black women are beautiful with clothes and without clothes. Right. Period. You know? So, once again, for those talent that want to go that far, you know, hey, with eyes are watching. You know what I'm saying? Eyes are watching all over the world and all, you know, uh, race, cream, colors, and all of that. And they like, wow, okay, these sisters, they great. They're not all broken down and big booty and all that other mess that they try to uh, come at us with, and unfortunately, music videos show that. So that's what I'm, I'm sure that some people may uh, think is how all black women are. No, that's not true. Come on, man. We're professionals. We own businesses. We're intelligent. We educated. So I mean, you, you, I mean, you know what I'm saying? That's what. That's why I'm at. Here's a here's that, a that's just why I'm at. This is a perspective from a listener on uh, Black Enough. That's a, a website pushed by, um, what is his name, the economist, the economic guy. He's got the Black Panther School. I uh, can't Boyce think of his name. Boyce Watkins, that's right, on his site, because we're connected on that site and they're watching there. And Green Beasley says, Black women are ashamed of their big extremities, but not when in Africa. The black man lived among queens with some of the biggest, most luscious anatomy ever known to man, and that is the problem. The white man took one look at the black woman's body and went bananas. He could not control himself and violated our queen and at the detriment of his stick frame women. Thereafter and foreafter, the black woman was made to be ashamed of her nudity and was told to cover their body. Yes, we've lost a lot. So that's from uh, Green Beasley over on Black Enough website. He chimed in and said that. So, you know, it, it's funny because in because there's such thing there's a such thing difference as artistic nudity and then there's um, nudity for capitalism. I would say. Would you agree with that? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, sure. I mean, I totally uh, agree with that. You know, like I said, if this, uh, if this, if this, if this, if this, there's a talent, if there's an actress, model, whatever, want to go partial nude, all nudity, that's their right. That's, that's, that's what they want to do. As long as it's not in the sight of kids and get into the wrong hands and, and, People take it one way and export it another way. If it's, if it's done in a form of art, like Rudy says with his with his language that he put on work, he just don't use you know every cuss word, every other word. He does it in, in a rapid style and in a form of art. It's the same thing. It's his art. I mean, they got thong, they got paintings, awesome I mean, you know, if you want to get real serious about it, come on, you know, look at uh, African. So in a lot of countries, they're living, they're talking. And nobody, nobody thinks of it uh, in a sexual way because that's just the way it is. It's the culture, it's the way it is. So it's all about how people take things. Man, that's unfortunate, that's just the way it is. People take things out of content and make it what they want it to be. Black women are beautiful with clothes, partial clothes or without clothes, period. Mm -hmm. So where was Rudy going with the, al the uh, album covers? Like uh, eat out more often. Where was he going with that when he uh, 
posed himself when he posed in the nude for those covers. Where was he going? I know that the movie is gonna tell it, but like, let's tell our audience about where he was going. We used to say things like that for shock value. That's all it was. It was for shock value. And it was not like making a, a statement statement. It went along with his music, it was his comedy, if you will. Think about his, his, his words, his comedy, and look at the album covers to, to gain your attention and to, uh, you know, to get you to look and listen. That's what it was really about. It was not a statement. You know, sometimes people have statements when they, uh, you know, dress a certain way or put a photograph up in the magazine, whatever. But this was really not a statement. It was like to shock you and like, wow. I wonder what's on in the inside. That's pretty much what it was, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So he was born March 17th, 1927, in um, Fort Worth, Arkansas. Is that Fort right? Fort Smith, Arkansas. Oh, uh, Fort Smith, Arkansas. That's right. And then he passed in Akron, Ohio on October 19th, 2008. Correct. And, um, when he moved to Cleveland, he worked in clubs as a singer, dancer, and comic in character as Prince Dumar. Is that correct? Yeah, as a psychic. Yeah, he, 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 you know, he was a psychic and he, he did that for fun. Now, he did break that down to me. That was just all for fun. He was not really a psychic. Rudy would just try anything will stick. In order to become an entertainer, it was just in his blood, man. It was in Rudy's DNA to be uh, an, an entertainer. Now, I don't know if you familiar, you know, back in the fifties, you know, Rudy was doing what they call those uh, rockability uh, 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 song that was done like in the style of Little Richard and, and Chuck Berry uh, and the other artists, Jerry Lewis and. And that is perfectly Rudy, and, and, uh, and also Little Richard. Rudy was doing songs like that. He recorded uh, probably close to 50 singles. Mm -hmm. He never hit mm -hmm. in that arena. And so this so is what so this is what the movie is going to talk about. Because after he was in Cleveland, he joined the army, and he was stationed in Germany, and that's when he first developed his comic style. Exactly. That, that, that's true. That's exactly what happened. And then, then he released and of course, his... after he... Go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I said, after... When he no, came... I, well, I was say. Yeah, when he came back from the army, he released his first LPs, first comedy LPs between 1959 and 1964, and then in Hollywood in 1970, while working in a record store, he learned about the uh, signifying monkey right a poet would come in and tell that and then that's how he brought dolomite to life from listening to that particular uh poet do the signifying monkey yes uh, uh rico, rico the wine watch he, he was not necessarily you know how uh, sometimes when we get together, we tell jokes, uh -huh. and you know, and uh, this guy told these tales, obviously, where he uh, uh, heard from somewhere else. And uh, one of Rudy's friends that worked in the record store with, with him suggested that, that Rudy, you should record that you're a comedian. And next thing you know, Rudy's at his house with a crowd, a sound guy, passed the weed around his mind. And told these jokes and recorded it in the rest of the history. And that was and seven. That, that was that was between 1970 and 71. Just, he released three so LPs. Well, oh. it was 69 when they recorded it. Okay. But the album was released in 1970. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Eat yeah, more. It was so so the they released the following year. So the three albums: Eat More Often. The P belongs. The P belongs to me, and the Dirty Dozen. Uh, well, uh, in 1970, 
that you stop me, believe it or not, I don't know if you know this information, but this, uh, he don't know after, of course, was the first one with Dolomite, like the joke on it. They take the five mic, they want this peak along the knee. Both of those albums were charted on Billboard oh. at the same time. Did you know that? Oh, no, I didn't. Yeah. That's that's great information. Uh -huh. I, I, I'll, scan, I'll scan the chart because I have that information. I'll scan it and, and send it over to you. Yeah, Rudy was on Billboard chart with two albums at the same time when the Jackson Temptation. I wish I had it in front of me, man, because I could I would read the top 50. It was, it was a top 50 back then. Mm -hmm. but Rudy, he was up there with two albums at the same time, man. You probably can Google it. It probably come up if you got a, someone who can tap in for you, but it might come up. Yeah? Okay. Now, now, that was amazing. For him to have those type of language albums out back then, and it shot right behind each other on the release, it was amazing. As you know, a lot of things with Rudy was amazing. I just kind of guy he was to give, as you probably know, he gave a, he, he would take a minute, he was here. I gave him a lot of first thoughts, you know what I'm saying? From directors to camera people to um, makeup artists, actors, actors. Rudy gave all the people their first start, you know, with his movie. And now they have careers. They have great careers. You know, people like Ernie Hudson. You know, he, I don't know if you know that uh, James Ingram and the group Punk Revelation, big ups to uh, Dap, Gary Dapp and Melvin was still uh, around. I interviewed them for my really, really more documentary series that's coming out. And along with James Ingram, uh, I interviewed them several years ago, and they gave me a lot of stories because I was not around when we did uh, film uh, Dolomite. But those guys gave me a lot of back story. Uh -huh. You know, how they got shut down in the left when they was filming the movie. And uh, But they, they were the group. A funk revelation, with, which is once again James Ingram. If you look at those at scenes in the nightclub, you see James Ingram and his brother and the rest of the guys um, actually, you know, performing um, on stage, and they also okay. have a couple songs on the original uh, Dolomite Mike soundtrack as well. And I stay in contact with Gary Dowd and Melvin, the, the, the other two guys that I've met, along with James Ingram when I interviewed them. It's probably been like eight years, so I have close to a two-hour interview with them for the documentary uh, that will be coming out, and they gave me a lot of information that I didn't know because they were there and I wasn't. Okay, uh, hold on for one second, Donald. We're gonna bring in another phone call because we're going through the topic and talking about Dolomite too. So we got another phone phone call from seven seven three. All right. Welcome to okay. the film review. Who's on the line? Hi, I'm just been around. Hey, how you doing? Can you turn? Can you do, do, do you have I'm your right. Do you have your radio up? If you can turn it down and then on the replay, you'll be able to hear it because we got to hear you clearly and have a clear playback. So who's on the who's on the line one more time? I couldn't hear it correctly. That's why I need you to turn it down. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, well. Hey, how you doing? Okay. I'm all right. How are you? Good, good. This young lady here earlier in the week she had a presentation where she did this burlesque situation on her facebook page where she changed positions she was in the nude but she changed positions and showed nothing at all it was genius so i reached out to her i said we need to have you on because you're uninhibited and we need to know why you believe because she kind of touched on it and i said well she'd be a great guest what what do you believe are the 10 first of all tell them who you are and then you can get into the question the top 10 reasons why black women are afraid of nudity okay so my um first reason is joseph and i am the producer director choreographer comedian writer of a show called Sugar Brown Comedy and it's the only black erotica in all of Las Vegas. Very unique. Um, it's erotic, but it's also comedy. 
and I'm a producer here. And I have a Las Vegas residency and I also go on tour with my show. And really I empower women to be sexy and uninhibited. But I think that, um, yeah, on that live, it got shared so many times and um, there were so many trolls, mostly women who were very mean and ugly that had to say horrible things about me when I just woke up in the morning and want to talk to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't even on purpose, but I'm also a dancer, so I know I'm able to uh, manipulate my body in ways that is magical. So to the eye, um, but I think a lot of women and men who live in a patriarchal society that says that um, Black women are just sex objects, especially if they are new, that, that they want sex, and that's all they want, and that's who they are. Um, and they should be disrespected, which is crazy because they'll say stuff like, oh, I put some clothes on. Now, see, when I have actually multiple degrees, how many likes and shit do I get on that? Like, minimal. But the likes and shares I get on being used is completely different. So it's this, this contradictory thing that I think is very patriarchal to help. This is going to sound really bad, but I think this helps allow men to be reckless. So it allows men to say, yeah, women who are used are horrible people and they should be put down. But, but at the same time, let me try to do that hurt. <laughs> Let me try to have her. So it kind of protects them in that, you know, uh, well, this woman isn't worth respect anyway, so that's why I'm going to treat her the way that I want to treat her. Mm -hmm. um, I also think that people project their insecurity. Most of the pretty girls, they never do anything like They never say anything bad. They never troll. They're always loving it. Um, pretty girls love it. Girls who have insecurities, maybe they are a little bit overweight, or maybe they don't feel as pretty, or maybe they have a color complex, you know, um, and that's why they have to wear so many weaves and so much makeup and all this other stuff, but I don't have to wear weaves or makeup or any other things. Um, and yeah, I still get the follows, and that has to do with my, um, that has to do with my being, my aura, that doesn't have to do with my body um and so some people are jealous about that you know um i think it's born from insecurity and then there's the part you know that says that everything is bad and sex is bad and radical is bad and all these other things when to be honest with you that wasn't even a sexual post i was just up <laughs> so you know it's it's been it's been really interesting it was very controversial and very odd i hadn't had that many people um, sharing and following, I think it was like a hundred and ten thousand people or something like that. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was all set and set. it went, it went, it went viral, right? So, would you say that your shows are are geared towards black or African American people, or is it something where you know you're pushing for everyone, but you are pushing directly more towards black people? Um, well, because I come from a very black experience mm -hmm. that is the um overall message that people are going to get support black women um or women of color and or any any woman but definitely black women and women of color who are doing whatever it is that they want to do because they'll see you know white women that will do there's all kinds of shows pop with reviews and they get all kinds of respect but black women don't and why not and, and, it, and it comes the word from black other black people that have been taught that you can't be sexual, you can't enjoy sex, you can't enjoy your own sexuality for yourself, and that your clothes make who you are. And what other people say about you make who you are, and that's not who I am. I don't follow societal standards. I do what I want to do when I work here. Um, and a lot of people don't understand that, and a lot of people are jealous of that freedom, and they just really have to get secure in themselves. So, it's really for everybody who is color, the black experience of a female, erotic, 
creative, expressive artist. And, and that was why it was so important because I had talked to uh, Donald. He's still on the phone. Donald Randell, he was a manager for Dolomite and also he runs his catalog now. And it was when I was talking to him earlier in the week, he was speaking about how Rudy Ray Moore was for his people, right? And so the things, the, the comedy that he did was for his people and it has influenced hip hop music. It has influenced uh, films, even what he did in film has been used and copied over and over again. So I thought that you and Donald being on the phone together at the same time because I felt as I watched you and researched you that you were for black causes and blackness and black is beautiful and that's where Rudy Ray Moore was back in the 70s. And Donald, where is the disconnect of black is uh, where's the disconnect in Black is Beautiful compared to today in 2019? And then I'll get your perspective on it too. Go ahead. Don't. I'm sorry. Uh, repeat that once again. The, the disconnect, because back in the 70s it was Black is Beautiful, and somehow in 2019 it's almost as if it's Black Get Back. Got you, got you. You know, it, it's that whole taboo thing. It's like it, you know, everything else. We, you know, we had black power, soul power. You know, we dress a certain way. We had our Afro. You know, we, we, you know, we had our black leather jacket. We had the black hat. You know, we had our own identity. But we, we, we unfortunately, we, we're going. Some of us are going towards uh, with, with, with society and and it's time. You know, we're not really showing off who we really are to a, a, a look at the hair look, look, look what look what the kids are wearing today we, we dress a certain way we had a, look at those uh, 70s movies and tv shows we, were, we had our thing together back then and that's only what, what they allow us to have but we came a long way we didn't depend it we should be showing off more often now than ever because we got the money we got the status we can do whatever we want to do but we just not doing it and so staying independent. All because of the society. All because of the. Because of society. Go ahead, I'm listening. Oh, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, I was trying to. It's all because. Oh, okay. I know there's a delay, but uh, so you're saying it because of society, what? Society wants us to be what they want us to be, and we follow along with. Okay. We're, okay. We are. Kings and queens, we're beautiful people, we're smart, we're intelligent, we create just about everything that, that is, that it is, that really, really matters. And, and some of us just don't understand that. Show off your blackness. Now, I don't know if you know this, Rudy has an album out called The Simpsons Black Man. He has Lady Lee, which played the character Queen B in his movie. I own her catalog as well. They both have an album out called The Sister Black Black Man. She has an album called The Sister Black Woman. And she actually is describing the uh, the black woman, how beautiful her body is. So we have a chance to uh, uh, sing The Sister Black Woman by Lady Lee. And it's really, they, they use the name The Battle, and Rudy used the name The Print. So that's what he used for it. Um, uh, his, his, his still a Rudy Ray Moore album, but he used uh, the Central Black Man by the Friend, Lady Reed, which is Queen B, used the Social Black Woman by the Matter. They actually describe the black body, how beautiful your body is. Because that's, that was the thing to do back then, but it's really the thing to do now, not to be ashamed. You know, and cover up. We are beautiful. And, and that and that is exactly... That is exactly where I'm getting to. Lanita, when, when you hear him say that, and he has a yeah. perspective from the 70s, what does that, how does that make you feel like that's history, our story, I don't, I don't say history, it's our story, so it's like a foundation that was there, that was lost, that people might forget, but hearing that, does that make you say you're even more fortified and more more justified in what you're doing and what you're putting across in your stage shows. Um, yeah, I mean, what my stage shows are very 
revolutionary. And it depends on who is watching that is projecting their own issues onto me. And I have to be very careful not to take that all in. But, um, you know, I think that the colorism complex has been here for a long time and still remains. I think patriarchy has been here for a long time and still remains. I think the 70s was probably, and that was like a very short stint. I want to say it was a six, seven years top of black and beautiful and right. wearing the afro and things of that nature until pretty much white people shut that down and stopped hiring yeah. people with natural hair. Exactly. And, I had I got a comment so, from I got a comment uh, from uh Black Enough uh Green Beasley. I had read it earlier, but I'm gonna read it again. I wanna get your perspective on it. Black women are ashamed of their big extremities, but not when in Africa. The black man lived among queens with some of the biggest, most luscious anatomy ever known to man, and that is the problem. The white man took one look at the black woman's body and went bananas. He could not control himself and violated our queens and at the detriment of his stick frame women. Thereafter and foreafter, the black women were made to be ashamed of their nudity and were told to cover their body. Yes, we've lost a lot. What do you think about uh, Green yeah. Beasley's perspective? Yeah, I love that perspective. And, and unfortunately, it's not even just, you know, black women who are ashamed of their bodies and being sensual. We are, women are sensual beings. We're sexual beings. We like to move our hips. All the dances that they're doing now are ancient dances that we've been doing for centuries. But it just so happens that white society that this bad, this low, this is ratchet, this is all kinds of things um, that's unacceptable. And black society took that in. Now, I think that there's a difference between black society and conscious black society. Okay, okay, back, so back, back, back there. Okay, there's one, wait, 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 I want, I want, I want to get this across. Let's back that up a little bit. You said that the, the black people took in the negativity. Explain that, expound on that a little bit before we move forward, because I think that's a crucial point. Expound on that a little bit. Well, um, black people trying to integrate into white society felt like, okay, if white people say that this is racist, let me try to be more white. Let me straighten my hair so I can look more white and more acceptable because that's more pretty to white society. Let me put on this makeup. Oh, they said twerking is bad? Oh, let me not want to do that because I want to be high society. It's the elite, you know, black people who are following white supremacy, to be honest with you. Oh, oh, oh. Following white supremacy. And now some people use it um, and say, yes, I'm going to be black and black and I'm going to get $40. And then that gets confused with what I'm doing, which is black is beautiful. The black woman's face is beautiful. The black skin, the black facial features, the black hair, all of that. And there will be people who will troll me and say, oh, you know, your hair is too nasty. Your hair is thin. Your skin is too dark. Oh, she looks kind of ugly. She looks like this. She looks like that. And um, and that's what they've been taught. Because white society has taught us that everything black is bad. And absolutely everything. Mm. Uh, hold, 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 hold. Okay, hold on the line, 702. We're coming to you, 702. We're coming to you next. Uh, go, what was you about to say, Donald? I was about to say it's the total opposite. I think that's just a shock over there, boy. <laughs> it's it, it, it she is getting the nail. She is hitting the nail on the head. It's that whole, you know, that whole uh, black doll. Uh, experience with the black girls having the black doll and the white doll. That whole thing. You know, we're taught and ashamed of who we are. And, and, and it's really sad that we, we, we're feeling that way. We, we're following what society wants us to be. I mean, that's why 
the assholes like I'm black, saying loud, I'm black and I'm soft. Listen to what James is saying in that song, man. I mean, that is a deep song. If you really listen to the words, that is James Brown was hitting on the end with, with that song, man. And, and we, we need to start saying it up loud again. I'm black and I'm proud. We need not to fall into those traps. When you look at the dictionary, white is, is white and pure. It's, it's clean and all this and that. And black is darkness and it's evil. When it could, it's when it, in our hands in more ways than what? When it comes to the word black. No, oh, when whenever I heard the word black, I always thought of beautiful. That, that's what I did. But you know, uh, Mocha Angel, she chimed in from Black Enough. Also, she said, "Hmm, I wonder what would be Sarah Bartman's answer." We all know Sarah Bartman. She was in South Africa, and then her husband died, and then the Frenchman took her over there and put her in cages. And yeah. that see, this is getting into. So she goes on. She says, "Sometimes I do this. Flip questions." Ask yourself, why is it so many pale mayonnaise eating bone bones showing or the contrast big male jar eating women have no problem showing their pale porcelain bodies? Or better yet, why are these mayonnaise eaters striving to execute several types of surgery procedures to look like us? That's what uh, Mocha said, Mocha Angel. Let me take let me bring this phone call up here. 702, you're on the line. Who are we speaking with? Welcome to the film review. 702, are you there? Okay, they're, they're not saying anything. They're not saying anything. Going once, going twice. Okay, take your phone off of a uh, speaker because I, I can hear you trying to say something, but we can't hear you. Take it off a of speaker. Going once, going twice, try to call back. We might have a bad connection. All right, so, um, what can we say about this? This is uh, Lanita. Tell them again about your, tell them again about the uh, brown sugar comedy and where they can see you in Las Vegas. Okay. It's called Sugar Brown Oh, sh sh Excuse and me. Yeah, that, have, that's my fault. Excuse me on that. Excuse me. No problem. No problem. You can get that mixed up all the time. So, no problem. And I am at the Royal District every Friday and Saturday here in Las Vegas. Okay, good. Um, it is a really interactive show. It is a very, it is a very black culture show. And I mean um, black consciousness. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it's going to go a little bit deeper than most people might think. Okay. It is entertaining. It is a comedy show. It is interactive. It is erotic. So you're going to get all that great for couples, even good for single people. Just You have to be a very open-minded person and conscious. Um, I do get, you know, some white people in there, and the white people who enjoy it are the ones who understand that they have white privilege. Um, and no oh. one, no one, I, I set that down real quick in the very, very beginning. So, and it lets me know who they are. So yeah, and I travel and I tour uh, with the show as well. Okay, tell them one more time because your phone dropped when you said where the location was. I think, I think they're trying to play with it okay. so that they won't let you know, let you be able to let them know where you are. Say it one more time. Okay. So, Sugar Brown Comedy, and I'm at the Royal Resort every Friday and Saturday. Um, you can follow my page, Sugar Brown Comedy, or Lenita Charay. Uh Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to... Okay, we're going to let you go. We appreciate you calling in. Yes, thank uh, you. We definitely, uh, yes. Love, definitely love your perspective, yes. and uh, we're going to speak again. Okay, all right. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. I want to say, this is Donald Rabbit. I want to say, keep keeping them on the head with, with your thoughts and you knowing who you are. And, and um, it's great. It's wonderful to hear a sister talk the way you do. I really appreciate this. Black man, oh, thank you. 
Thank you. I really, really needed to hear that today. So thank you. You're welcome, my queen. You're welcome. Have a good right. one. Talk to you all later. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. All right. Hey, I want. I want to say something. Uh, I want to share something before I forget because it's important. Um, okay. There, there's a, a whole new black museum in Washington D.C. There's a whole new exhibit. I haven't been there, but uh, another uh, manager of a, a, a of an artist told me re- about a year ago in a meeting we had. He said it is awesome. He said it goes down. I think he said down seven. Uh, seven feet. And every floor is sort of different experience, you know, from slavery up down to how things changed over the years into the into the present time of of Obama being a president. I mean, I, like I said, I'm going to make that trip just just for that. And he said, man, he said it is awesome, man. So some people may know about it or went to that uh, particular museum to see that whole exhibit and they said it would take like a day or half a day or something like that or two days to really to grab it all in for those who don't know about it why should they be see that whole black museum thing that's down there it should be the next parent if you can't make it the trip to africa probably the second best thing probably i'm sure from what i was told Stay on the line, 216. We're going to be coming to you in a second. Uh, Let me give you my top reasons why black women are afraid of nudity. Number 10, no sisterhood. uh, We hit that. They don't appreciate... She doesn't appreciate her youth. Meaning that youth only comes around once. And after it is gone... I always think about... There was a book out... uh, about the, about the Zigfeld Molly girls right. and his shows they were all new yeah, Zigfeld right yeah. in New York City and when you look at it those those ladies are gone or they could be 90 or 100 years old now and they can look back and say this is what I looked like then and that whole nudity thing didn't even mean anything in the end because you know they're gone and you'll be gone one day so always experience your youth and enjoy it uh number eight not over the plantation meaning what happened on the plantation which uh sugar brown comedy she talked about it uh seven they're out of shape and thus and so they may be hated she 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 spoke on that that was interesting number six she feels she doesn't measure up to other women. And really, people shouldn't worry. God created you the way he created you and love what you have because it's only one you. And don't let what you think about when you look in the mirror and you looking at these at these images being thrown at you, the zeitgeist being thrown at you, and then you say, I can't do that. Think that men will look at them as H's and sluts. And that's not necess- that's not necessarily true for people who were uh, cultured. Like we were able to go to the history museum, the art museum back in Cleveland. Now they, they took it out after we left. Reagan cut all that out of schools, but we were able to see that as as elementary school kids. We went to the museum and we say, "Look at this woman up here, this oversized," and they they revered their women, right? No, so we need to revere ours. Number four, she thinks being negative. Uh, okay. In print. Mm-hmm. Oh man, I can't read. Uh, in front. Okay. She thinks being negative in front of men means having sex with men, and that is totally not true, because nudity is a natural thing. It's more natural than clothes. Number three, worried about what the church will think. She she spoke on that. Number two, worried about what family and friends will think. That is the great. And, and number one. This is the number one killer in my idea of people's, of black women's esteem when they're afraid to express themselves. Uh, She has or hooks up with a boyfriend like the movie Star 80. It's always something like Star 80. Star 80 is the Caucasian side, but the black side can be even more because they will tear you down. Oh, you can't do it. I once had this guy standing in front of this girl who came up about modeling. 
And he said, you can't do that. You don't have a face for that. You don't have a body for that. And she just walked down and didn't inquire anymore. So the boyfriend or even the male friend who can hold you back, right? So that's my that's my uh, top 10 list on that. You still with us, Donald? Because I still got to play the Dolomite clip that I did. And we'll get into more Dolomite. But I'm going to take another phone call at 216. I'll take another phone call. Okay, I'm here for the four eight. All right. I'm here, my brother. I'm just listening and getting educated. Uh, Two one six. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Good, okay. good evening. Okay, Me turn. And okay, Hello. turn 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 down your radio. Turn down. I mean, turn down your computer. your computer that you're listening to, so we can have a clear signal. Okay, I believe I recognize that voice. Is that Monique? <laughs> Is that Monique? Yes, it is. You called in last. How you, are you? You called in last week. I did. It's so good to hear from you guys again. Yeah, well, it's so good to hear from you again. Yeah. But you told us yep. that you enjoyed us so much that yep. you would become our first show sponsor. Yes. And so tell yes. us about your product yes. as I bring the flyer back up so we can see. Your product here. Let me let me adjust this. This is doing some fiddle faddle for me here. Okay. All right. So so tell them well, what you have, and we're going to be modeling as you yes. talk about it. Yes, beautiful. Go ahead. Okay, the product that I have is my jewelry. It's handmade, and um, I, it always features beautiful. some natural stones and um, minerals of the earth. And uh, I, they are all individually done. Um, I, I make them myself. And um, I came up with this because I've always been creative. I've always had a love for jewelry and art. And this is my way to express my art through my jewelry. And um, I just wanted to share it with the world. And I'm just very excited. And this naturally fly uh, creation boutique. I'm um, sold on Etsy.com. On Etsy.com. So, how long have you been uh, yeah. uh, preparing to uh, bring this uniquely black product to life? To, to the audience, to the well, people? This has, been, this has been years in the making because I was making jewelry for my family and for friends. And they were see people on the street that ask me where I got different bracelets I would be wearing on them. And I just decided I should just start making them to share with everyone else. And um, I was inspired by places and companies like Who and Shine John and people like them. Well, Monique. There um, we are. There we are. Yeah. Naturally oh, right Fly Boutique. Yes. You can see the ad up here. It's yeah. a little big. It's a little big, but it's in the back of us, and you can actually see the bracelets, yeah, you, you can. know. And, and so, and go ahead. The, uh, Monique, your jewelry is naturally fly. It's beautiful. I love the stones. Thank you. It's just beautiful. Well Thank done. You. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And so, we appreciate you coming on. There we go. I got it adjusted yes. right now. Thank naturally you. fly boutique. And you can see. Let me move out of the way of it so you can see the bracelets. You know, I styled that. I styled that photo yeah. uh, this <laughs> just this morning. You know, what I mean, I, that's that's part of my skill of catching it. So you got the jewelry there, and you got your ad there, Beautiful. and you can see the ad on Crazon Dion page yeah. on Facebook, also on Instagram. Yeah. You can see the ad and go there, and she's linked yeah. on the ad on Instagram. You can go there and order these bracelets. They come in male yep. and female. Yes, beautiful. You know what they call unisex, I guess. Thank you. Thank you. So, so tell them one more time before we let you go. Uh, tell them one more time where they can pick up. Give them your Instagram as well as yes. your uh, your other site where they can purchase. Okay, on Instagram, you can follow me at Naturally Fly Creation, and on Etsy.com, you go to www.etsy.com slash shop slash um, Naturally Fly Boutique, and that's where you can purchase them at, and if you wanted to ask me any questions or email me, you can email me at um, 
www.naturallyfly19 at gmail.com. I do custom jewelry. Um, if you wanted anything done in any certain way, I use natural stone and all of my uh, creations. And that's how you can find me. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I saw on your um, Instagram page the beautiful bracelets you did. I think um, it said uh, grandma and granddaughter, right? It was a beautiful set. Yes. That was beautiful. Yes. It was a set. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, so we're going to uh, go on, but thank you for calling in and thank you for being our first, yes. our first show sponsor. Yes. At Just Like TC's Barbecue Crib is our first uh, advertisement partner, so we appreciate you. Yes, thank you. Oh, yeah, well, I appreciate you both. Thank you so much, and you have a wonderful evening. Thank you, too. You also. Bye-bye. Thank you. Hey, I need some of that jewelry made for me, man. I need some of that. Oh, yeah. So she's she right there on the site. She gets it out fast. She got it out to us fast. And, yeah. you know, this, these are nice, yeah. nice creations. That's a nice mess. Kind of kind of reminds me of a, a necklace my father used to wear back in the uh, 70s, in the uh, mid-70s and uh, early 80s. It kind of reminds me of that. And uh, it's a beautiful piece. She, she produces beautiful pieces. Um, okay, let me go in real quick and bring up our media piece and let's see what it is. And then I want to talk to you down under air while this is going on. Our blog talk people won't be able to uh, see or hear this, but if you go to Crazon Dion page or Lord Lab Films on Facebook, you'll be able to see this presentation on uh, Dolomite. Right now, uh, it's an interview that he conducted, where it was conducted on him, where he talks about how he came up with the root, with the Dolomite character, and we're gonna roll into it and see if it rolls in smooth like this. He come in the record store and he used to recite this portrait, and did you know I um, would ask him to recite it for me while I was running my store, and maybe maybe ten, fifteen people in there. And he told the tale Dolomite and the people just fell out. So this gave me the idea to record it. I recorded it and the next day it was history. <laughs> you marketed your, your own comedy albums, right? Uh, did you ever get in any trouble because of the content early on? Was it? No. No? I marketed my own comedy records with uh, the, I don't call it dirty uh, words, I call it uh, ghetto expressions in a form of art. The reason I refer to it as a form of art is because I didn't just use one word after the other. I had it in rap and rhyme for it like the farm, like uh, way down in the jungle deep, the lion stepped on the sea to find monkey's feet. You see that rap and rhyme and uh, the expressive language is in it, but I called it a form of art. Who are some of uh, the comedians that you like today? Uh, well, I wanted, due to the fact so many of them have idolized me and have copped my style and have uh, made great headways with it, uh, I can say that I uh, look at their form as being something that they were trying to get a piece of the work. But I do not endorse the structure that the, all of them use. But I do like uh, uh, Joe Torrey and I like Chris. Rock, one of the men that is similar to me. Uh, wh whose idea was it to actually take Dolomite and put it on film? Was that did you come up with it? I did that. See, in other words, I manufactured my own records, and after I manufactured Dolomite, the character got so strong. I said, "Well, where do I go from here?" So I had a screenplay writer to write me a play, and I used what money I had to film Dolomite. It took me 13 months to try to work and get enough money to try to get it on the screen. And after the 13th month had passed, I was able to get it on the screen and it was literally made fun of. People says, oh, he's over there using all of his money trying to shoot a movie that will never get shown in a theater. And I'm here to tell you that in New York City on 42nd Street, when I premiered Dolomite here, I'm the Lyric Theater, one of the theaters, in some theaters. 
In the Lyric Theater, I had 1,500 people in that theater at 12 noon. Um, tell us some of the other people who were there, who, who, who supported you in, in your endeavors back then. Well, DeVille Martin was my director and co-star. That was the man that appeared with Fred Williamson in a lot of his pictures. And um, not really any big stars, but I did bring to light. In other words, I opened the door for a lot of people in the film industry, directors, makeup artists, and one big star today that he appeared in my film first, The Human Tornado, was Ernie Hudson. So I opened the door for him and a whole lot of other people. It was a first in the movie, Motion Picture Dolomite, The Human Tornado. And that's why he did what he did, the Lion King, because he was able to bring that and use the F word and, you know, 20 times right behind each other. But that's nothing. If you can write something or come up with something where it's telling a story, that's the difference. That's and, the difference. And so people, uh, and, 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 for, for those on Blog Talk and for coming back or that are that were streaming on Facebook, that was Donald uh, talking pretty much what Rudy Ray Moore was talking about for our Blog Talk listeners what Rudy Ray Moore was talking about in the video presentation that we just showed you, right? And so uh, we're continuing on. So now, Rudy Ray Moore, he financed, he self-financed the Dolomite movie. Is that correct? Yes, he did it for $90,000 for, for those first two couple of records he did. Um, he got more often than this people belong to me. He took the record sale royalties from that and he said he wanted to do more with his career. And he knew that he was never going to be put in a movie for no one else. So he decided to make the Dolomite character a feature film. And he speak out for a writer, which was Jerry Jones, who played Buck Blakely in the movie. And um, they met several times. And Rudy told this guy about the script. He played the record for him. When I interviewed Jerry for my documentary, which you got to see some time in the near future. He said he didn't know, he said he never heard anything like that in his life, he said. I could just, I, I still remember the conversation. He's like, what is this? And he said, man, I can't do nothing with that. So Rudy stayed on him. So he, he came up with those characters. And, and the rest is history. Rudy seeked out, you know, uh, the Bill Martin, which which was a uh, co-star and a good friend of Fred Williamson. You know, doing those uh, movies, you know, back in the day, and offering him the role of director, and also, also he played Willie Green at the Dolomite movie. Now he and didn't. He, I don't know if you know this. He didn't. He didn't necessarily. I'm sorry. He didn't necessarily want to. Uh, he really didn't uh, believe in the film once he got on there. Would you say that he was one of those type of? Black people who thought that the money was greener and the ice was colder on the other side? Um, you know what? You know what? Not only that, my brother, the crew was laughing at Brody. They were saying this movie would never be shown on a screen. People were taking Rudy's movie and making fun of Rudy at the same time. And his face is behind his back, man. But look what Dolomite is right now, man. It's in the dictionary. People have film, I don't know if you know this, they have, uh, they teach film in certain colleges and they use Ruby's film as an example how to get a movie done. How to get a movie done. So, uh, how to get a movie done. For the for low cost, and for uh, getting it done as, as you know, as favor. You know, it, it takes a, a, a community of people believing uh, in you to get it done. You know, Robert Townsend, you know, he, he, he did his movie with a credit card. He did his movies with credit you know, card. You know, Spike Lee did, I think she's got to have it yeah. somewhat probably the same. Yeah. I, know, I don't know the whole story, but we know Robert Townsend did his with credit card. But Spike Lee did, pretty much she's got to have it with, on the same concept. 
you gotta do it. If you believe in yourself, and you have stuff, you gotta go for it. You gotta go against the odds, no matter what. You gotta go for that star, through the, through the uh, tornadoes, through the rain, through the fire, through the snow, through the earthquake. When you believe in yourself, you gotta go all the way with it, man. You have to do it. You cannot let people talk you out of it, sidetrack you. You gotta go over those hurdles when they come, when they come at you, because they're gonna come. Gonna and come. that's what Rudy did. So for yeah, those who it's comedy. So for those who don't know, on the screen, uh, we have Donald Randell. We have him there with uh, Rudy Ray Moore. You know, so that's who that is. So we want to make sure that you know who you are listening to right now, talking to us on the film review, music, culture, politics, and society. Uh, so tell the audience before we let you go because we're going to get into talking about some other reviews that we're going to do but it was a pleasure having you on yes, yes. um what was rudy ray moore's wish for his his uh productions that he did to live on and what was his wish for black people in enjoying it and using it to move forward in production well, you know, um, over the years, as we tour, you know, state, state, city, the cities, we, 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 obviously, for, you know, touring for over 25 years, you go to the same places. Rudy always connected with the everyday people, with his fans. He loved his fans. And so they, I know the comedian and the hip hop artist, they always came to him and pulled him aside. You know, Rudy's really trying to sign autographs after his shows, but these people want to know about his film making. They want to know how he made it, how he hung in there. I've seen, I've seen people. I'm not about to get in New York City uh, years ago. Uh, Rudy did a players ball. I'm never about to forget how uh, Dougie Fresh and Slick Rick uh, when we backstage after the show, picking Rudy's brain, just talking about his career. And how he lasted for so long. And he said because he believed in himself. And, and it's pretty much like I was just saying. You just got to stay on it. He, he, he wants to be taken serious. Because some people don't take Rudy's movie serious. Because you see the boom mic, of course. In his movie, you see the stream falling down in the a tornado. And that's that scene. But he did what he had to do in order, you know, to get the movie made. You know, and, it, and it's like he said, um, you know, it's an interview, and, and, and like I said in the documentary, you will see him up and close, because I got the great um, footage of Rudy telling this story. You know, it was only a dollar some change for that scene that when he was pulling out a uh, really green guts and all, uh, no, right? It, it, it was, uh, I forgot what it is. It was a camp surf. And a bag, I think he said shit one day, if I can remember correctly. <laughs> it was a dollar and stuff. Yeah, I know, I know it's crazy. But you know, I, why it's on my mind, because I, I, I won't forget, because there's so much. Rudy loved doing things ghetto style, street style, hood style. That's just who he was, man. And that's why he called his, his, his comedy ghetto expression. That's who he was. He, he, you know, he, he, you know, he said, you can't, he didn't have the budget to do a Hollywood style, so he had to do a Hollywood style. Yeah, but you I know, mean, you Jer know. From, um, Jer Jones, Jimmy Lynch, Rudy, they, they came up with some awesome things to make those movies happen. You know, it wasn't just Rudy, but, you know, Jimmy Lynch, and it was Jerry Jones and Ben Taylor, which you saw and wrote the, and performed songs going like, these guys be with Rudy. They made these things happen, man. Cliff Rockford, who, uh, Directed people, we saw both people, we saw all the. I, I was fortunate to meet all these guys. Some of them not here. You know, Lady Reed, she, she was really right on. And the movie, Don't My, My Name, is showing some of this, but it's a lot deeper, too. You know, they did, you know, Don't My, My Name, you know, the Hollywood style, but I was there to see most of Ruby's film made. I worked on TV this far. The devil's talking about the first time. That I met the movie. I knew about it as a kid, sitting in my brother's role, I had listened to the movie on a track, sneaking like anybody else. You know what I'm saying? That's a whole other culture thing. 
sneaker they listen to Rudy Ray Moore. If I got a penny for all the times I heard fans and, and other rappers in the kingdom come to Rudy said, man, I used to sneak and listen to your record. Man, I have yeah, that, that man so many times. We were just that, we were, a whole nother culture. We, we were just talking about that last week, how when the party records came on, our generation had to go up and go to bed. Uh, we couldn't hang around the adults anymore. For those who are listening, who are just chiming in, we are here with Donald Randell. He is the owner of Dolomite Records. He is keeping Rudy Ray Moore's legacy alive through DVD, soon stream, and also vinyl and CDs still a product available. Tell them your websites and where they can uh, purchase Rudy Ray Moore's material. Okay, uh, I do have two websites. I have DolomiteRecords.com and also I have RudyRayMooreStore.com. Um, the shopping carts and everything will be up. I just got things up there for the fans to see. But now it's time for you know these things to be purchased. And also, you, I, I stay in contact with the fans directly. Um, um, on the uh, Mike Records Facebook page, I, I, I listen, I comment, I reply, and because this is what Rudy was, if Rudy was here, he, he'll be doing what I'm doing for him because this is what he wanted me to do. You know, this is Rudy Ray Moore and Donald Rabbit's business. I know what he wanted me to do. That's why he's up in the catalog and all the right to do what I'm doing. But once again, uh, there will be a um, eBay page as well for purchase. The DolomiteRecords.com, RudyRayMoreStore.com, and also I have been negotiating with other folks to do merchandising along with Rudy's family blessing. So we are partners on on certain things. And uh, like I said, the documentary here is coming, where you will see a lot of Rudy Ray Moore himself. We talk about over 25 years. Of filming a big popular movie around while we're on the road. So this is what he wanted, and I and, and it's a great time, of course, because of the movie Dolomite is my name, which is coming this fall, starring Andy Murphy and, and, and a great host of cast. I saw the movie, I had a, a personal screening next for cast for me. I watched the film, it was greatly done. Uh, tips up to uh, uh, Craig View, the, um, the director. Scott and Larry, who wrote the film, they did a great job. And West Knight and Murphy, uh, T.I. Uh, Lunell. Lunell, my yeah. girl Lunell. I mean, you, you're talking about my boss, Chris Rock, and uh, uh, what, what's the guy named? Uh, King, 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 in him. I mean, these guys all did a wonderful job. T.I. I mean, T.I. is writers. in it too. T.I. seems like his part is hilarious as the film producer. Yeah, yeah. He, 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 from Rudy, I mean, they did a lot of, a lot of things in, 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 a, in a comical way, even though Rudy, of course, was trying to be serious. But, I mean, they, I mean, the movie is well shot, well done, not a dull mo- moment. You know how some films, they get kind of slow. Yeah, that dull turn. Yeah. A little bit more, you get, it's not this movie, man. I mean, it, it's like back to back. You try to between in two hours, which is life. Of course, they didn't cover it all. They didn't really get into him you know, being the mo- one of the most powerful artists in the world in the hip hop world. They did a little tribute like towards the end about this kid coming up to him doing a little rap thing. But that's why the documentary is that I'm doing. But anyway, the film is coming. So am I my name. And we, I'm working on the merchandising. And once again, we're doing really more. Store.com, DolomiteRecords.com, and join me all the time. You can inbox me any question or for merchandising. Um, I'm doing the whole thing where I'm going to be flying around interviewing the fans for the documentary series. I'm going to come to you and then, and then where I'm at, um, California, where I'm, where I'm um, touring at or whatever, I will interview them there. I want the fans involved because that's what Ruby stood for. He stood, he stood for the ghetto, the hoods, and for his fans, because he realized uh, his fans made him. And Rudy used to say this to me all the time. He used to preach this to me. The power is with the people. The power is with the people. And that's where we're going to leave it. Thank you for 
hanging out with us on the film review and answering the top 10 reasons why uh, uh, black women are afraid of nudity. And I think that you made the young lady's day with what yeah, she you said. Did. You and did. we appreciate that because yeah. I saw the merit in what she was doing yeah, because yeah. you only come around this way once yep. and ain't no need to be uptight while you're here. You know what I mean? So we want to thank you again. We want to thank you again. And we will talk soon. Yeah, thank you. It's been an honor. Oh, okay, that's great. Uh, I'm going to be sending you some, uh, some Dolomite t-shirts and the CDs and finals to give out to uh, your viewers. Maybe you can run a, a contest, you know, in another way so down the road. And whoever answers them right, you know, and uh, you can send it to them. But I want you guys to have some of this. Material, yeah, you know, you know, we're gonna sport it. I wear, I wear two X. I wear two X if it's loose, two X. Three X if it's okay. is if it's fit. My wife wears a two X. You know what I mean? So you know, we will sport it, and we're definitely gonna pump it up, especially when the movie comes out and after the movie. We appreciate you, man, because you know what? You were about your word when I spoke to you. You said this is what we I'm gonna do. You yeah. you came through with it. And that's all you can ask for in this Hollywood and Las Vegas, Los Angeles, West Coast market that we're in. Yeah. Word is bond and word is everything. Yeah. All right, man. Expect expect a big box in the mail within a week or so. You you're gonna get a big box of some Lee Ray Moore, Dolomite my goods, man. Thank you for allowing me to put the word out on Rudy. And um, once again, fellow fans, go to the um, Dolomite Records Facebook uh, page. I'm posting everything I can. I got so much stuff to post. I mean, video wise, I give you guys teasers of some unreleased uh, masters that I have and footage and photos. I, I'm gonna keep Rudy. Um, uh, legacy a lot in the Facebook page, Dolomite like Records. Thank you once again for your time, blessing, continue with your show. I'm going to continue to listen. You know, as I clean up, I'm going to listen. Okay, I hey, appreciate you. you. Have a great evening. Thank you. All right. All right. Peace. See you next time. All right, I'll next time. I'll be soon, by the way. All right, we, we, we'll hook up most depth. We're gone. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right, so that was... That was Donald Randell, people. You know what I mean? Uh, word is very important to me. Yeah. Word is bond is very important to me. Yeah. You never know how many people, yeah. you know, coming from Cleveland, Ohio, in the Midwest, word is everything. Yeah. Word is bond yeah. is everything, right? So coming out in a, to a new market, yeah. you have to fish and cut through a lot of you know, to get to the people that are about their word, right? So now, people, not to belabor and beat a dead horse. Well, I got one more thing to say about, uh, we had one more person that chimed in, and I want to make sure I read his response. He chimed in on the Facebook uh, page, the Facebook group page called Black Filmmakers Group, right? And his name is Mark Murray. He said, good point on the nudity. I'm reminded of the series True Blood where everyone was new on that show at one point except Ratina Wesley. She was not up for it. And that's what I say. I, you know, I look for it every week because had she done it, she would have laid all of them to shame. I thought, you know what I'm saying? But she wasn't for it. And I was like, well, maybe that might be why she might not be as, you know, as big as she could be but now she's on uh queen sugar and i mean uh yeah queen sugar and she's you know job. seems to have moved on so this is our this is our the film review periodical people and you see you see that website right there you can see us globally over the over your smart tvs and your roku devices by uh first downloading the youtube or the vimeo app and you say uh, search Lord Land Films. That's Lord Land Films, and you search that, and you're able to watch us globally on, you know, on your smart TV and Roku devices. But you can see us on your laptops and everything by typing in 
me pull this back vimeo.com forward slash showcase by crazy d and all of these replay and they go up and people love it and we love it and we love everybody that chimed in and called in tonight snowfall people snowfall snowfall a show that is not that is not a exploitation of the crack era that started in the uh, early 80s and made its way all the way through the 90s and we can say we are came from the generation that survived it. We survived the crack era where the black man wasn't thought to be able to make 21 and I remember when one of the uh, when I was in college and I was on the radio and uh, one of the uh, alphas had brought me on the campus as the DJ. He heard me DJing in the summertime uh, in the dormitory. Uh, he was like, I'm gonna get you the iceberg. He got me the iceberg. I remember when he turned 25, I said, I hope that I get to see 25. He said, you will, brother. And now I am 47. We made it through. So there's always the killing fields in between 16 to 21. And if you get to 25 and you hit that 26, you you were pretty much closer to easy street, we could tell you, right? But anyway, Snowfall. The last two episodes of this season happening, not the last, not the conclusion, not the finale, right. but the last two that we have watched right. really opened the viewer's eyes to the detriment yeah. of the rock, of rock. Yeah. It wasn't called crack then, it was right. called rock. The media picked up crack rock and ran with it. But so for this discussion, we'll say crack rock, but it was called rock. The character named Melody, played by Rain Edwards, and the character Wanda, portrayed by Gail Beans. In episode six, called Confessions, Rain Edwards' character at the end of the episode, yeah. she knew, she saw what was going on with the crack cocaine, and she went on and uses it in her acting of how she beamed me up, Scotty. Yeah. When you see it, how yeah. she changes, and how she beamed me up, Scotty, it's like them eyes, it, she don't want to do it. So now, so you come to episode seven, which is called Pocket Full of Rocks, right? You see the contrast between Wanda, who is already deep into being a crackhead, versus uh, Melody, who just hit and is crazy to keep getting the rock, right? But she's still functional. Wanda isn't, and the way that they do this contrast and the way that they use the angles in the film like they do a film where they're sitting they, they show them front angle sitting on a curve then they do this crazy side angle where it's low angle looking at them from the gutter and it's telling the story that they're in the gutter it is it, it's, it's just amazing snowfall it is John Singleton wanted to make sure that it told the story of the CIA and how the CIA through the Iran Contra scandal, Reagan trying to fund guns uh, to the Contras uh, and trying at the same time, trying to mess with Iran at the same time, how they, they funded that war through the destruction of the black community, the CIA, that's right. And so him, this, describing this in detail is so amazing well though, though the drama acting of the black characters is really boring when you get to the other two stories that it's broke up into it gets kind of boring but you need to know what was happening and how the CIA was doing that and the Franklin character yeah played by Damson Idris is intelligent and he's figuring this out this is kind of loosely based on freeway ricky ross not rick ross the rapper but freeway ricky ross who who proliferated cocaine from california all the way over to dayton into new york florida blah, 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 chicago blah, 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 atlanta and, you know he moved it to the pipeline and but you know, no glorification of that. 
but you have to watch Snowfall because it is not the standard. John yeah. Singleton is such the great director and the, such a great movement. And he has various directors telling the different scripted stories right. through their eyes. And yeah. this, I mean, Snowfall is just it. It is. This season is great. I mean, the first season was great as well. We covered first season. Yeah, we did. In a previous uh, mm -hmm. film review episodes, but this season, I mean, the last episode we saw, it was powerful. It just keeps you on the edge of your seat. We are just yeah. talking about just two episodes out the season. Yeah. It is revving up within the season. I think they got like four or five more episodes yeah. left in this season. But these two episodes, everything built up to these yeah. two episodes. This is like the pivotal middle point of the story where it's full blown. Where the police officer in the the episode before right. Confessions right. lets the uncle, well you have to watch it. Yeah. You have to, what would you give Snowfall right? These oh. two particular episodes right now, what would you give them? Ten. A ten, definitely. Ten. I mean, and, uh, along with the acting, you know, like we said, Damson Idris, Angela Lewis, Amin Joseph, Isaiah John, uh, Michael Hyatt, I mean, uh, Kevin Carroll, I mean, they... They all bring kill it. To life. They bring it to life, as well as Sergio Perez Manchetta and uh, Carter Hudson. You know they um great cast, but that last episode we saw was just it was powerful. I mean, it brings it, and she should definitely the director of that particular episode. Yeah. The last two episodes, each yeah. one of them should be up for awards, right? Right. And but she should be. Up for award, Rain, yeah, Rain Edwards, Edwards and Gail Beans, who yeah. plays one of both of them, should be up for awards, but yeah. especially Rain Edwards because the way that we never saw you always would see an established crackhead, right? Like Gail Beans character Wanda, right. right? But you never saw a character that, that was clean cut, yeah, in the beginning, and got in, in how the drug, right. Beam me up, Scotty. The beam me yeah. up, Scotty. The crack smoke in yeah. the brain, She's changing them. A this good actress, great really, really actress. great actress. Because it's like we're used, like you said, like in Jungle Fever. Right. Halle Berry. Halle Berry was great already job. there. She did an excellent job acting. She was already there. But to see Rain Edwards, you know her character, because like you said, I mean we've seen her since season one. Student, great student in high school. That's right. You know, and to see her go, her go. You know, to see the episode when she took her first hit, hit, and to see how it affected her, like just like that. The, the acting is phenomenal. And within twenty, you have to see that. I mean, if you haven't seen it, you have to see this episode within twenty-four hours. It's been twenty-four hours. Her life changed. Her whole life changed. She was within just. She was in. The, she was in. The, she was in the rock house. She was in the crack house. Within tw her, not just only her life, with her her father's her life, her friend Franklin's life, like just everyone that she grew up with. Franklin's mom started wow. to cry. That, yeah. that that was powerful. It the, was. The, 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 it was. You have to watch Snowfall. I'll yeah. give it a ten. Yeah. We got to keep moving because we we had to stay with we had yeah. to stay with Dolomite. Yeah, and had to stay with I'm the topic. So to we're moving. Family. I'm looking it forward to it too. To it was. It was. Okay, it's people. Lanita. That's right. So look, people, up on the screen right now, you see Dion Cole. Yes. And Jimmy J J Walker. You yep. know, right here, I got a exclusive with Jimmy J J Walker. You know what I'm saying? Uh, impromptu outside. He's a nice guy. I asked him a question because, you know, we interviewed uh, Bernadette Stannis, yeah. who plays Thelma, yeah. right? Thelma of Good Times. Yeah. That's her tag on Instagram. Yeah. And we interviewed her and she talked about how JJ's talent of how he learned his script. So you need to go watch that. And I asked him a question. And so it's like coming full circle as I get to meet and interview all of the people from Good Times, right? Yeah. So you can go right there on YouTube or Vimeo on your smart TVs on your Roku devices and search Lordland Films. And those interviews come up. And right now we still have this interview on um, because it was such a impromptu and it's kind of short. It's still on the Crazon Dion page, but it's spread all over Facebook in different um, 
avenues of watching it. And he's just a nice guy. And these are actual photos from the event. Now, this is Dion Cole. The first of all, let me say that Jimmy J.J. Walker is hilarious. And the topics that he hit were topical on point, And they sting. And he's not afraid. Now over to Dion Cole, people. Dion Cole. Oh, His man. shirt says Chicago kid. He's from yeah. Chicago, yeah. Midwest. Listen. Yeah. His comedy is cerebral yeah. comedy. It is. Right? Cerebral comedy. He will have you sitting up there. He has you laughing every it's rapid fire comedy right behind it. He tells stories. He hits it. And he has this one. He has his special coming out on Netflix in September. Yeah. I think he says September 8th, if I'm correct. But, and, you know, check the dates. But I believe it's coming out in September. Yeah. Next month. Yeah. And look for this one that he talks about simplicity. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to give it away, but yeah. when he talks about simplicity and how the audience gets silent on this one point, he said, yeah. If he talks about it. Yeah, if, yeah, you know, if he talks about it, because we're not going to give it away because he's going that. around the country, right. so we're not so going to give his stand-up away. Right. But it should be in there because this his stand-up is so polished. Yeah. It is. Polished. Incredible, yeah. incredible. Listen. He connects well with his audience. So he I'm does, like, he does. You didn't have one heckler. Not one heckler. Everybody loves fact, they said they, But they chimed in. They would say things. Yeah, he would laugh. It was like a conversation. Yeah. And J.J. Walker, Walker, same thing. Same they chimed him. in. He didn't have any heckler. No heckler. Either. Everybody either. loved it. Because it was rapid fire. Yeah, it was. They, they were a good combination together because J.J., okay. Jimmy J.J. Walker yeah. uh, hosted the show. Class And then brought him out yeah. brought Chicago kid yeah, nice. Dion Cole out and it was a beautiful was. atmosphere yeah. inside the yeah. showroom yeah. at Orleans yeah. right yeah. beautiful okay people so what would you rate the comedy show a 10 Definitely, Dion Cole and uh, Jimmy J.J. Walker, both hilarious. Hilarious. Yeah. Haven't hilarious. missed, hasn't, uh, J.J. Walker hasn't missed a step, yeah. and Dion Cole is just killing them, man. I'm looking, looking forward to them coming back. Now, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Listen, yeah. I had this white dude that was in front of me, though, right? He had this shaved head, he had a shaved head, and he had this... This tail, this mane of hair, and every time he would laugh, he would just flip it back. And I'm like, what is he going his on? Fingers, I think yeah, he kept putting his fingers through his hair. I'm like, what's wrong with you? Not to mention that he had some kind of, because he was shaved, he had some kind of, now I've seen tetters on Black people. He had some kind of tetters because he had some bumps, but the tetters had like a pinkish line going around. It was making a continent on the back of his neck. Into his into his scalp, right, With, where it was shaved around. And I'm looking at him, and I say, man, I know that he can't be clean. He flipping, and he could have lights. And I, I'm laughing, ha <laughs> ha, and he like this. I'm like, what are you doing, dude? Every every time he be flipping it, just flipping it. What's well, wrong with you? It was, it was some yeah. napping, nap, nap. It was dirty, it blonde, was... napping, 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 napping. He had I tethered. Sitting, no, I was sitting there watching and I was just thinking, and if people don't think, I mean, because I'm telling you, like the Black Ice Chronicles episodes may seem kind of like when you deal with the unseen, but, you often deal seriously, with the unseen. Like, all of that stuff happened. All this stuff. Just like last night watching a comedy show, sitting in, you know, in the theater. And I was sitting there thinking nobody would ever believe, believe that this is happening. That this is happening. Because and, and cause I called it. I said, crazy. what if what's uh, all around us is nothing but Caucasians sitting in the seat? Because I was seeing the people come in. It was majority black, but there was some Caucasians. Getting in. And sure enough, because we were sitting in the second row, right? Sure enough. Yeah. And he didn't have to go after people. He wasn't that type of comedian, no. Dion Cole. But sure enough, they were sitting in front of us. And he kept flipping his hair, and you know, oh, you, you know, you smell nice. that prell, that prell, that stale prell. Man, I'm telling you. And he had but tethers, just, and I was like, "Come on, it's man!" It's kind of just that, like, literally, like, for every joke, every second, this guy would, <laughs> and he would 
run his fingers through his hair. It was nappy, dirty blonde. It was, it was, it was an experience. It was an experience. <laughs> and I was like, man, I felt like I was itching, like maybe he had kicked some some lice back there or something. But anyway, people, well, how would you rate the comedy show? A 10. 10. Great. 10. Both artists, 10. Yep. We're moving on because we got to keep moving fast here because we're running out of time. We're coming down to the end of the yep. show. And we want to yep. say that this was a beautiful, robust yes. situation tonight. Yep. We got a new show sponsor and, of yep. course, our it, uh, ad partner TC's Barbecue Crib is constantly yeah. with us. You see her. You see yeah. the uh, TC's Barbecue Crib yeah. on everything. Yeah. Lordland Theater. Matter of fact, watch Lordland Theater yeah. on YouTube or Vimeo through your smart TVs. It's going down. Okay, people. Let me see. Though this changes. Yeah, there we go. Sharon and Harold. Sher Sharon and her husband. Yeah. And let me tell you something. Q Money. He is a MC, a rapper from Cleveland, Ohio. If yeah. you think that hip hop is dead, you must only come from one coast. Because this dude is kicking lyrics. His father was in the game in Cleveland. Yeah. And he is in the game and he is bringing it. But he ran into a little mishap while promoting back in April being in Atlanta, Georgia. You know, you have to be careful. But anyway, he was in Atlanta, Georgia, and the story goes that uh, his friend, who was an MC also, mm -hmm. <clears throat> he was found by another friend mm -hmm. and uh, the, the person who was dead's cousin, Q Money, was found standing over him with the gun in his hand, as the reports say, as the April 18th reports say. That he was found uh, standing over him with the gun in his hand, right? So allegedly. So, so allegedly, this is what's happening, right? But what doesn't make any sense about the story is the the person, the cousin, comes from out the bedroom, sees what the friend sees, gets the gun from out of Q Money's hand, and then pushes him out the door, locking the door. And my thing is. Something doesn't add up about that story, just my opinion on it. It just doesn't add up as how, if somebody was murderous, wouldn't they just keep murdering? I can only speculate because I write scripts. Maybe old boy might have shot himself. And he was so distraught, he stood there, picked up, and then the friend comes in the room, sees it, goes, get the cousin, cousin gets it. So if he was murderous, why would he not shoot? But anyway, that's for the law to decide, but we need to say free him because it's something about it that doesn't seem right. But this kid right here, everything that he comes out with is just cold. They talking about mumble rapping. You know, mumble rapping was a few years ago. Mumble rap is over. And lyrics, even the people who they say were mumble rapping are kicking lyrics. Yes. You know what I'm saying? People come around and say, you know, these, those Quavo guys, those, uh, they're not, the Quavo yeah. and the Amigos, they're not too bad. Yeah. They're actually good. So, you know, anybody talking mumble rap, that's past old, passe. But this dude does not mumble rap. He kicks lyrics. He's got songs like this right here. He has a, a dance to this. And when you go watch this video, you can see the influence of Rudy Ray Moore in this video, even though he might not know, mm -hmm. but Rudy Ray Moore was there and better than me. Right. The next one is Neat Sippin' Patron, which uses a sample of Sip It on Some Scissor. Oh, okay. Sip It on Some Sip It, Sip It on Some Scissor, right? 3 Six Mafia right. and Project Pat is actually on the song with a right. verse. So this was his next single that was really going to blow up when he got hemmed up in April in uh, Atlanta Fly Chanel Work right so I just gave you some of the uh, titles from off of Q Money Ain't Nothing Funny you can hear it on YouTube but definitely type in Better Than Me and Neat and watch those videos he has videos for what he's doing he is he is one of the coldest yeah. coming around. Talented. Talented. Yeah. All right. With, and with a great personality. With I saw great, his interview on Sway. Right. Had a great um, personality. Yeah. So, you know, uh, you know, 
we never want to say anything and you know we we want to say you know respect to the dead and we never want to see our brothers and sisters die but something something something's a right in my opinion but who am i i'm just the film review review guy but anyway Check look people right here you're going to be able to hear q money uh the song better than me on Episode 5, Mixtape 5 of the Film Review Music Review Show. The only show of its kind where we push to have independent hip-hop artists seen, heard, recognized in independent yeah. film and Hollywood movies. And everything on there can bang and be within the soundtrack of films. So that's coming up on August 31st. August 31st, oh the God, new the episode. We're at the end. Coming up in a few days, so we want y'all to look out for that. We would like to thank you for watching the film. We have uh, really come to the end of the show. Yeah, it's been a robust show, we must say. It's been a robust show. Great show. Continues to be a robust great show. Great, great guests. Great sponsors. Great sponsors. You know, I mean, it's just... Just a great thing here. As I'm fooling around with the uh, with the things here, so that's why I'm uh, slowing down just a little bit. But we want to thank you for watching the film review. We are the husband and wife team who bring you movies, music, culture, yeah. politics, society. Right? We bring you all that in something that we call. The Film Review. This is episode 73. Can you believe it? We're on episode 73. We love it. And we love you. And we want to thank everybody who up tonight. We appreciate you. And we will see you next time on The Film Review as I get the next piece that we're supposed to be running here on the outro, people. <laughs> As we go a little bit like this. This is a another great episode of the film review. We are the husband and wife team. We are the husband and wife team. We are the husband and wife team. Stay tuned. We're the husband and wife team. I'm Crazy D. And this is the film review. Stay tuned. We got a lot to talk about. We are the husband and wife team that review movies, music, culture, politics, and society. This is the film review. Movies, music, culture, politics, and society. We're the husband and wife team. I'm Crazy D. Tracy. And we review movies, music, culture, politics, and society. Sunday at 5.30 on Crazy on Dion page on Facebook. Live stream. The film review. Movies, music, culture, politics, and society. This is the film review. Welcome to TZ's Real Crew! Easy, easy, easy.